Thank you for giving me the opportunity to present Ice Age Dogs at this year's Canine Science Forum. My name is Bernie Taylor, and my research explores a deep root to mankind's creative capacity through the study of Upper Paleolithic cave art. Dog-like skulls have been found in Belgian and Altai mountain caves. They are determined to be domestic dogs by the crowding of their teeth, shortened snouts, and wide jaws. Dog paw prints have been identified along those of a child in the French cave of Chauvet. They were dated by the soot debris from a torch the child was carrying. Along with canid DNA evidence, all dating to at least 26,000 years ago, what we now call domestic dogs existed distinctly from gray wolves during the Upper Paleolithic, and they inhabited regions where humans were present. This age overlaps with and is succeeded by many Upper Paleolithic cave art sites, where there's an abundance of depicted animals such as horses, bison, ibex, and red deer. But where are the domestic dogs? How would we distinguish domesticated dogs from wild canids if we found images of them? One such distinguishing factor of wild canids versus domestic dogs might be their ears. In my literature review, I find no wild canids with ears down. It would be reasonable to suggest that if the canid has downward ears, we're looking at a domestic dog. We're going to look at two Upper Paleolithic European cave panels, both from about 35,000 years ago. The first is the Gallery of Discs in the Spanish cave of El Castillo in Cantabria, Spain. The panel is about 10 meters across, and the dark material at the top is the natural state of the wall. If we were to see this apparent canid without definitive ears, would we think this is a wild or domestic canid? Although the snout is also long like a wolf, I call this an unknown canid. What about this canid with its tail flopped forwards and fox-like muzzle? The ears appear to be up, but the position of the tail strongly suggests a relation to the Spitz dog and less closely to an Akita, which are both ancient breeds. As a side note, there's a zoo of animals in addition to these canids on the gallery of discs. This down-eared canid resembling a Swiss mountain dog in both taxonomy and demeanor might be an easier call. The Ice Age artist depicted the flopping ears, upward-looking eyes, and panting tongue. Our second panel is Gorm's Etching from Gorm's Cave in Gibraltar, dating to the same time period as the Gallery of Discs. This panel is the size of two hands as pictured. My work suggests that the initial inspiration for Gorm's Etching was founded in Paradoya from nearby Mohassan in the Sierra Nevada range, and then carried as a hand gesture. On Gorm's etching, we find these down-eared adult canids in a pup. The closest modern breed appears to be the Majorca shepherd dog that is native to the Balearica Islands off of Spain. I wouldn't say they're a definitive match and call this an unknown domestic dog. There's a pair of overlapping lean and long-legged dogs with down ears that closely resemble an Aswak or Tuareg Slohi from Western North Africa. These ancient domestic dogs bear no resemblance to gray wolves. These three overlapping and howling down-eared dogs have the appearance and demeanor of canary dogs from the islands of their namesake off the coast of West North Africa. Note the short wide muzzles and visible teeth. Here is a heavy coated canid with an outstretched paw long muzzle and apparent upward ears. This one is difficult to identify and falls in the category of unknown canid. What then did Upper Paleolithic hunter-gatherers use these domestic dogs for? I suggest the same as people did in near to present times. Of the modern dogs that we have a currently known Upper Paleolithic DNA connection is the Finnish Spitz. The other depicted Upper Paleolithic domestic dogs may be a promising direction for further DNA investigations. These images and the DNA record bring us to ask if all these so-called domestic dogs were manipulated by man in a few thousand years, or did a few strains of wild dogs evolve in distinct geographical areas prior to being domesticated. Thank you again for the opportunity to speak at this year's Canine Science Forum. This presentation has been posted to my webpage for closer review. I'm always open to cooperate on projects and virtually present my work to community and academic audiences.